So he was wondering if if there could be a new karmic stream created from nothing, or if it's just whatever's whatever reincarnates is always just reincarnated, or if something can come into existence to reincarnate. That, that's that's a great question. I, I, I'm not I'm not quite sure. One one you're saying could new karma be created out of nothing? And the other one is a new karmic stream, like beings being born from a karmic stream? Right, so whatever it is that transmigrates, that yes. it's karma and transmigrates. Yes. But can there be the creation or a new ah, whatever it is Thank you, thank you. This is the classic question. Because in Buddhism, it talks about <coughs> beginningless time. And this is just another version of the question. When did beginningless time begin? When did creation start? When did existence start? And so the reason why they call it beginningless is because there is no start point. There is no start point. So that's, that's the short answer of that. However, for example that there are many environmental beings, many environmental beings, uh, seen and unseen, let's say an insect or uh, a tiger, uh, that that fill the uh, various niches of environmental uh, needs in order to sustain this world. Birds, worms, all of these, everything here, which on a physical level needs to be here in order for this world to sustain. It just it isn't just sustained out of the hope that it sustains, that there is actually a, a biological uh, process. This biological process is not a karmic, it's not a karmic uh, birth for a worm or a bird or even a tiger. However, the reason why I mentioned tigers is because I went to Hawaii and I was very lucky. I was given a backstage tour of the zoo. Uh, One of the apes had been behaving oddly and this zookeeper was hoping that I would be able to talk to it or look at it or whatever they thought, whatever I could do to find out what's wrong with this ape. So aside from that, that uh, which was an interesting story also, that they have uh, several uh, tigers. And I looked at these tigers, and I saw that uh, some of them were environmental beings, that they fulfilled, they, were, they fulfilled, it doesn't matter the wildness or anything like that, but they filled an ecological niche. They were tiger, they were pure tiger. However, two of the tigers were, had become evolutionary beings, that they were no longer environmental beings. Something shifted inside, and they were, at that point, became individuals rather than a kind of, you might say in a more esoteric way, like a group soul, like the birds who who gather together and they swoop the starlings and this murmuration of starlings. It's as though they have one mind, okay? And so these tigers became a karmic stream. So that's the medium answer, that it is possible for an, evo- for an environmental being to become an evolutionary being. This we know happens with pets. For example, Chung Chung is an individual. She is an individual. She has an environmental, uh, she has a evolutionary, and which is why, for example, uh, traditionally they say that you pray that your animal takes human birth, but they never really say how exactly does that happen. Is that they're removed from, uh, from the uh, environmental uh, uh, status. For example, in, uh, in the Orient, there are many dogs roaming the streets, that uh, even people's pets, who are not individuals. They do not, have, uh, they do not have that individuality which you absolutely have to have in order to uh, have an evolutionary track of your own. So, 
I was surprised when I came to America in my before and I saw how pets were treated. And in this life, I had an interest to see what kind of changes happen. Uh, and, and in pets, it actually happens gradually. For example, Luna is not as individualized as Chung Chung is. Uh, although she does have some of that, she does have some of that, but whatever that shift is, she does not have, uh, she does not, she's not steady in an evolutionary, in an individual, and she's my dog, you know, so we'll, we'll keep working on it, but anyway, your sharing, this is the long answer, your sharing of your individuality can stimulate individuality in them. For example, as you see your pet as a person, we might say, not necessarily funny that way, but as a valuable being, then you are literally, even as an ordinary person, bestowing uh, the idea of individuality. So it is possible to stimulate them newly by your interest. And this is why the bodhisattva path works so well, because bodhisattvas can't help but see you as an enlightened being or having the potential to be enlightened. Something happens inside. And so you change due to that uh, stimulization, but it stimulates you into an individual evolutionary journey. It doesn't make you into something. It doesn't take something away from you. It helps you remember something. And so if we want to go to the really, really big answer is that all of this is occurring within perfection, within perfection. That there are no people, there, are no, there is no karma, there's no, uh, there's no evolutionary track. People are... Uh, beings are moving through lifetime after lifetime, suffering and happy, uh, really for no, no good reason at all. No good reason at all, other than they got confused. And so uh, these environments, which are created by God or by, you know, the, the needs of living beings, we say, that these are, that these are, important learning places to help us remember who we actually are.